I don't know about you, but when I got on YouTube to hunt up some good rocket videos, I spent hours looking around at a lot of cool model rocket launches. I hope you had a good time and found some cool videos. It can be really hard to catch all the parts of a rocket flight because they go by so fast and the rocket is so far away from most of the flight. So first what I'd like to do is describe the flight profile using this figure. Then we'll look at a video or two to see if you can identify all the different phases of a model rocket flight. The flight starts with the ignition of an engine or motor. We will use an electrical system to ignite the solid propellant engine. After ignition, the rocket goes through the boost phase. During this phase, the engine is burning rapidly and generating thrust to push the rocket into the air. The rocket rapidly accelerates during this phase of flight. After a few seconds, the propellant in the engine is expended and the engine no longer provides thrust to the rocket. This point is called engine burnout or just burnout. After burnout, the rocket keeps moving upward. This phase is called the coast or delay phase. During this phase, the delay charge in the engine is burning slowly. It generates smoke so we can track the rocket, but it doesn't generate any thrust. The rocket is now coasting and its speed is decreasing. The peak or highest altitude of the rocket is called apogee. If we've designed our rocket correctly and picked the correct engine, the ejection charge will fire just before or just after apogee. We don't want the ejection charge to fire too early because the rocket will be moving fast and the recovery system could be damaged. An early ejection will also limit the altitude a rocket can reach. We also don't want the ejection charge to occur too much after apogee. The rocket will be accelerating downward after apogee. If the ejection charge is delayed too long, the rocket will again be moving fast and it could damage the recovery system. If we've designed our rocket properly and picked the engine just right, the ejection charge will fire just at apogee. It will take a while for the parachute or streamer to, in the recovery system to unfurl and fo fully deploy. The point where the streamer or parachute is fully deployed is called the recovery deployment point. The rocket would now gently return to the earth in its return phase. Finally, the rocket will touch down on the ground. The last phase is the recovery phase where you pick up your rocket and you're able to collect the data from its flight. So that's the model rocketry flight profile from engine ignition to recovery. It all looks nice and neat on the diagram, but it's much harder to see all the phases in a real launch. They happen very quickly. Let's watch a video of a model rocket flight together and see if we can catch all nine phases. Did you catch all the phases? That flight took only 19 seconds. It's really hard to catch everything that's going on in such a short time. Let's slow the video down and see if we can catch all the phases. Here's the ignition. We can just see the exhaust starting to come out from the engine. Now we're in the boost phase and the rocket is accelerating up into the sky. Here we've just reached engine burnout. The rocket is coasting now. Here the rocket has reached apogee, the highest point of flight. The rocket has started to descend. Here we can see the ejection charge fire. 
and now we can see the chute starting to open. And here we have full deployment of the parachute. The rocket continues its controlled descent, slowed by the parachute, and finally touches down on the ground, a perfect flight. Well, I hope this video helps you to understand the various phases of the model rocket flight profile from ignition through recovery. You'll have to have a good eagle eye when you launch your rocket and pay attention to all these phases to see them, because we won't have slow motion out in the field.